So we're covering chapters three and four for these next uh, video clips. I'm gonna do it in sections because I'm reading in sections and I don't wanna get around to finishing it and then not remembering what I read so I can talk about it in the video. So chapter three uh, really called my attention. The title, Seven Ways We Parents Missed the Boat and How to Get On Board. And um, it was really, oh, it touched my heart when she shared her story of being at um, in Africa and the little boy saying Jesus is why he was so happy and that that was enough. So precious. Um, it also was very, uh, and I'm sure you all agree when she was talking about hearing other moms talk about what they're doing with their kids, like what school they're going to and what activities they're putting them into and where they buy their shoes and where they buy their clothes and all that stuff. If you don't if you let yourself, you can easily start to think that you have to do that too. And it's really neat to see, and as I read this, I'm realizing more and more, like she fell into all these traps that she is um, so lovingly and graciously advising other parents not to fall into and developed a whole new way of thinking. So I think that's really cool. So I'm a bullet point kind of gal. But I wanted to touch on the Jen Wilkin section on page 49. I love Jen Wilkin. I've shared this before with you guys. There's this awesome talk that she gave called How to Raise an Alien Child. It is exceptional. You have got to check it out. It's about 45 minutes long and it's awesome. She's a great speaker. So I was happy to see that she used something from her there. And um, then we dive into the seven ways uh, that parents miss the boat and one is we want to be our kids friends versus their parent their authority sometimes you know friends are always it's easier to be a friend right you can just like be laid back and chill and laugh together and all of that's beautiful and fun I definitely laugh with my kids joke with my kids but they know there's an authority and just because we have fun and laugh together and joke together and enjoy life together because life would be sad if we didn't there's also an authority and they know it and they mean to and you know what they want that they want a mother and a father so it's sounds so beautiful like i'm gonna be my child's friend not their parent but really they need more than anything and they want in their deepest heart they want someone to guide them teach them through this life and god's called us to the task so let's rise up to it right um so i you know, I don't really have anybody in my life that I think takes that road, uh, wanting to be their uh, child's friend versus their parent, but I've definitely heard about that and seen that in other places. And it's not good. Then we're afraid to say no because of the fallout. I'm not, I'm sorry, <laughs> I'm just not. Today we went to get some chicken feed and there's these huge lollipops at the chicken feed place and there's also lollipops at the bank and most Thursdays I don't know why I just said that on Thursday is my bank day <laughs> most day times that we go to the bank which it happens to be Thursdays uh, I say yes to a lollipop but there are occasions that I say no and when I say no my reason is we just had too much sugar this week or we just ate something junky before this no and they as often as we say yes to it, they know that it's not always yes. And so when, the, it, when it is a no, they know how they have to respond. You know, it's not always a yes. And so I think that's good. It, I guess it is nice too to have a, we always did this. And they probably will remember it that way, to be honest. They'll probably remember when they're adults, when we went to the bank with mama, every time she lets have a lollipop because that is the norm. But I think it's good to practice or to have them practice hearing no and having to deal with it <laughs> and not be afraid of the fallout because it's a training opportunity if there is one. As inconvenient as it is for us, it really is a training opportunity. And then we feel guilty about our circumstances. Ah, that's so frustrating. Our circumstances, a child, a child is satisfied with so little, you guys. Like, I think I shared this on one of my videos recently. I asked the boys, like, what was your favorite thing about this summer? You know, you guys, we didn't do anything this summer. We went swimming and we went blackberry picking and we just had a lot of play dates and slept in and that's it. And they had a list 
a list of all the wonderful things they loved about their summer. They are satisfied with so little. It's us that thinks they need more, 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 and go crazy giving them more than they need. They'll be fine with just a little and they'll be happy and, and just look back and think everything was so wonderful. Don't be, don't feel guilty about your circumstances. You can make life beautiful and delightful with nothing just by joy and cheer and a happy atmosphere at home. And then the busyness thing, you know all about my thoughts with busyness. Um, you should check out my video, how to declutter your life. I know that as our kids get older, we'll get busier, but I will be as unbusy as possible for as long as possible because I just think it makes life miserable and there's so much lost in it. You lose so many opportunities to stop and just rest and stop and enjoy and stop and converse and stop and just take in the beauty all around you. Everything's next place, next place, next place or next thing or da da da. I, I never want to live that way and I know that it'll get busier because my kids are still young but I think that if we're really intentional and put a lot of effort into it, we can still be less busy than the average family, you know? And then the next bullet point, uh, these are all the ways that parents fall into um, pitfalls. We don't want them to fail. We've talked about this. Failure, first of all, the Lord is glorified even in our failures, first of all, right? Second of all, so right there, training opportunity. Second of all, character building. Men, especially, I mean all of us, but men need to know how to respond to failure because it's gonna happen. It's gonna happen in sports, it's gonna happen in performance at your job when there are men, it's gonna happen um, in relationships, it's gonna happen throughout life. And they need to develop trust in God and resting in the Lord's sovereignty when those things happen. And those are all things that we can train and guide them through. Um, and it builds character, you know? Uh, so yeah, it's sad and it's painful to watch your child suffer in any way whatsoever. If they have an embarrassing moment, I'm just like dying inside. If they have their feelings hurt by a friend, devastated. If they fail at something or if they're discouraged, it is devastating. But my goodness, think of all the ways that the Lord has used those things in your life to grow you in him and to teach you things that really really matter he's doing the same in our children so it's good for them to fail um and we don't want them to feel left out you know michael pearl a very controversial person author pastor i really don't know what he is but he does have a book called um jumping ship and i really enjoyed it as much as some of the things most of the things that they say I don't agree with they really do have some good parenting advice and in jumping ship he talks about we are raising our children different you know differently than the world is raising them and so they are gonna not get to do all the things that all their friends get to do and that's okay but we need to be prepared and ready to bless them in other ways so like let's say sleepovers that's can you turn that off Sleepovers are not gonna happen in our family. They just are not. They might happen in other people that we know in their families. I have no idea. I know many friends that are not gonna do sleepovers either, but some might. And so when they hear about these awesome things going on that they are not allowed to be a part of, they might feel left out. Well, us as parents, we wanna replace that with something else, something else that's really fun. Like maybe we can say, hey, you can't sleep over Saturday night at this person's house, but next Saturday, why don't you invite 10 of your friends over? We'll do a bonfire and s'mores and you guys can, whatever they're into at the time. If they're doing, you know, scooters or those little cool, what are those skateboards called that everybody has now? Oh, uh, razors, rip sticks. Rip, sticks. rip sticks, you know, like something cool. They'll have a blast, a few fireworks, like sparklers, anything, something, something that to them, they feel like so awesome that they're doing this at their house. And yeah, they couldn't do the sleepover, but look at this awesome thing that mom and dad let me do or had me do and my friends could be part of it. And that's really good advice, I think. And so, yeah, sometimes they're gonna feel left out, but you know what, as believers, 
we're going to be left out because we are aliens in this world. We are in this world, but not of it. So that's a good learning and training opportunity. But also then as parents, we want to bless our children with, you know, other cool things and neat things to do with their friends if they have to miss out on some things that we're not going to be okay with, you know. We don't want them to be unhappy. Happiness is not the point of life. And I know that that's what the world tells us constantly. <laughs> I just want to be happy. I just want you to be happy. Whatever makes you happy. No, whatever brings you closer to God. Whatever it takes to bring you to bow the knee to Jesus Christ. That's what I want. I don't care about happy, unhappy, but you need Christ. That's what we want, right? And sometimes they will be unhappy. And again, another opportunity to point them to Christ. I know I'm not going by the book, but you read it, right? So <laughs> it's just my thoughts along with hers. So, you know, there will be things that they miss out on. There will be things that they feel unhappy about. But the Lord, it's going to be part of their testimony. If they meet Christ one day and they become Christians, it will be part of their testimony. And maybe one day they'll tell you, thank you. Thank you for this and this and this because it did this and this and this in my heart, in my mind, in my life, in my character. And they'll see that. And I know that in the moment it's really hard, but as life you know, goes on, it may prove to have been exactly what we needed to do as parents. So under the, we don't want them to miss out section, she touches on something that we touched on already in chapters one and two about explaining to our kids that just because somebody else is doing something doesn't mean that we're going to. Every family is different. Every family makes different decisions for their family and that's the decision they made for their family. This is the decision we're making for our family and our children will probably hear that a lot as they grow up but you know um, I think the last sentence when we parent with intention and moderation and our kids end up getting something they really want or have worked for it will be appreciated instead of just getting everything anytime, right? Think about maybe as a child, you didn't get to eat out that often or go to the movies that often or buy new shoes often. You know, we all have different childhoods and you finally got to go out like once a month or something like that. Wasn't that like the highlight of your month? So exciting, this huge, amazing, big deal. But when you go out all the time, going out to eat is just what? Something normal, right? It's neat to like say no a lot and then yes. And it's like the most exciting, most memorable, most wonderful thing. And it's okay. You're not depriving your children. You're just teaching them moderation. You're teaching them to not be overindulgent. You're teaching them to be patient. And you're teaching them self-control. All good things. 